Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm George and today I'm in the Anya Cafe and as Valentine's Day is just around the corner, I know exactly what I'm going to take back to my studio and paint. So remember, please subscribe to my channel and let's get back to my studio and let's start painting. Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick breakdown of my palette before we get into the painting. So on my palette I've got titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, yellow ochre, raw umber, alizarin crimson, permanent green and ultramarine blue. I'm painting on a canvas panel which is 30 by 25 centimeters and I've toned it to a neutral gray. This is quite a nice color to work on top of as it's about a mid-tone so it's taken away that brilliant white of the canvas which can be a bit distracting if it shines through between the brush strokes and also as it's a neutral gray the colors will look more true to their hue whereas if it was quite a bright orange let's say which can be nice for painting landscapes it would make the colors look quite cold in comparison and actually if I keep painting and relating stuff to let's say a warm and premature it could force me to mix warmer colors throughout the entire painting which may be an effect that I would like to go for but on this heart I really want to save those warm colors for the really rich reds of the heart cake and I want them to really pop out against the gray background also as the background cloth is gray it's nice having a gray undertone as it already gives me that color relationship the moment I start painting down the reds I can compare them against the gray background of the canvas I'm sketching the outline of the cake using raw umber paint and I'm trying to think about the structure the three-dimensional structure of the cake and in order to help me do this I'm painting a very light center line which is sort of running down the middle of the heart towards the point of the heart and I'm also trying to simplify some of the curves by straightening them slightly as it's easier to move straight lines around than it is to move curves around as straight lines are a lot more specific. and to paint the handle of the spoon I'm just checking what does this point line up with vertically and I can see that the handle of the spoon from the angle I'm looking at it is just in very slightly to the right from the furthest part of this white base that the cake is sitting on and by holding my brush up to my still life and then checking this relationship by holding my brush up to my painting I can mark down this vertical relationship accurately on the painting. And now I'm starting to redefine and get a bit more specific with the contour of the cake and the spoon using this grey mix that I've made for the background cloth. And at the moment I'm keeping the background very simple and later on I will be a bit more specific with the sections of light and some of the shadows and folds within the cloth but my main focus right now is to try and get the shapes of the heart the base and the spoon which are really the focal points of the composition as accurate as i can here i'm painting this white base and i'm using pure titanium white to paint this as this is the lightest section of the painting and it's nice getting this down at this early stage of the painting as I know that no other area in the painting is going to be lighter than this. So this is the key, the lightest light on my value scale for the painting. And once I have this down I can then compare other value relationships within the painting to this. So if something looks far too dark in relation to this light section then I can make it lighter. or 
when I mix the color mix and it goes down on my painting and when I compare it to this section it looks too light I can then make it a bit darker so it's nice to have a value which I can consider a true value to relate other values to as no value and no color exists in isolation every color and every value will look different depending on what color I paint next to it for example if you have a gray section and you paint really dark paint next to it then this gray section can look white or likewise if I paint really light paint next to it then this gray section can look dark so the same thing happens with colors if you paint green next to a red then the red is going to look more vibrant and so is the green but if you paint green next to a really bright green then the other green can look brown and it's important to be conscious of this when you paint and there's a famous quote by the French romantic artist Eugène Delacroix which goes something along the lines of if you give me the color of mud with it I can paint the skin of the Venus so that may sound a bit confusing the Venus being the Roman goddess of beauty who in the 19th century when Eugène Delacroix was around was always depicted as a sort of shining white figure how's he going to paint her skin with the color of mud well what he goes on to say is as long as you allow me to choose the colors I paint around it and by that he means sure mud may be a dark murky color but if you paint an even darker murkier color next to it then actually this color of mud can look really quite bright and quite vibrant and Eugene Delacroix is considered to be one of the last old masters so he really knew his stuff about painting. As I paint this heart cake I start by painting in the shadow sections of the cake which are lower down nearer the base and also on the right hand side which is further away from the light and I'm painting the shadows in quite thinly as it's nice to paint thin shadows as this gives them a bit more transparency and in general when painting an oil paint if you keep the shadows thin and the lights thicker the actual quality of the paint the texture of the paint where it's thicker will actually make the paint look lighter as well as this paint will capture more light whereas if you paint the shadows quite thick what can happen is that bits of paint which are thicker in the shadows can pick up a bit of light and can actually break up that shadow value that you have and make it look like you have light bits of paint in the shadows when in reality it's just the paint texture causing this effect so so in general I try and keep the shadows quite thin And now I'm painting in a half tone, which is a transitional tone between the shadow sections on the cake and then this lighter section of the cake, which is facing up and receiving more light. And these half tones help to turn the form and give it that smooth and three dimensional appearance. And then as I paint the top of the cake, which is a lot lighter, it's also more chromatic. It has more of that really vibrant red so I'm adding more cadmium red to my paint mix and I'm trying not to add too much white to the mix as white doesn't just make things lighter it also makes things a bit cooler and a bit duller as I'm using titanium white which is not a completely neutral white it is a slightly colder white which has a slightly chalky effect lead white which I've used before is a bit nicer in the sense that it's slightly more translucent and that you can lighten colors without taking too much of the chroma out however it is banned in pretty much every art shop I think they passed a law a few years ago and I, I don't know if you can even buy it over the counter anymore and also it's not great for your health so I stick to titanium white I've got really used to working with it but you do have to be conscious when you mix your light colors especially if it's a bright 
colour like this to try and mix them without adding too much white if you can avoid it. And as I paint these transitions on the cake, I'm using separate brushes for each colour mix. And this is to prevent, say, the dark colour of the shadow mix getting mixed in with the light colour of the upper cake and creating a muddy, dull red, which is not what I want for this area. And as I paint the transitions, I'm also making the most of the paint being wet and I'm dragging the brush from one transition through the other transition as well, creating a very soft effect as the paint from these subsequent layers mixes on the canvas. Here I'm starting to redefine and add a bit more detail to the shadow sections of the cake. I'm painting in some of that reflected light which is bouncing off this white base and going into the shadow, creating this light section underneath the core shadow, which is also cooler in colour temperature, so it's not as red as the other sections of the cake. Here I'm getting a bit more specific with this specular highlight on top of the cake as this highlight is really the focal point of the painting. It's the part which really captures people's eye, it has the most contrast and it's actually one of the things which drew me to paint in this cake is I love painting highlights, they're really satisfying to paint and here I'm layering up the paint a bit more to give it a bit more of an interesting texture and I'm really loading my brush with a lot of titanium white to really give it that really bright, shiny glow. Here I'm starting to add some detail to the spoon and as the spoon is a metallic object you get these real contrasts between the lightest sections and the dark sections of the spoon. For example there'll be some really quite dark greys right next to some really bright light highlights and these highlights are pure titanium white. I'm trying to paint them as light as possible. And if you can get the position of these highlights correct in relation to the other tones on the spoon, you instantly give it that metallic shiny effect. And to paint this area I'm mostly using quite a small hog hair filbert brush and the nice thing about the filbert brush, the shape of it allows me to use it as a point or if I turn it on its side I can also get broader bigger strokes as well. And hog hair is quite nice as you can really load the brush, it can carry a lot of paint so when I paint down those highlights, I can apply them with an impasto effect and this thickness of the paint in the light sections, it also adds to the appearance of brightness which helps give the spoon that shiny metal glow. And as I paint this cloth in the background, I'm consciously trying to underplay the contrasts. I'm not trying to paint any of those dark accents where the folds in the cloth make those quite distinct shapes. I'm trying to keep everything quite soft. And the reason for this is that contrast and sharp edges draw the viewer's eye to them. And I really want the heart cake and the spoon in the middle of the painting to be the focal point so I don't want the background to be too distracting. So for this reason, I'm keeping the brush stroke quite loose 
and although there are value shifts with some sections being lighter and others being darker i'm not pushing these contrasts too hard and i'm keeping the whole of the background in the mid-tone range of the painting I hope you liked that video of me painting this chubby heart cake. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at George Frederick Thomas. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.